Hi, um, thank you all so much for joining us this week for our student run study tips for the new year and beyond conference. Um, we have a few ground rules to knock off before we get started today. Uh, first, we're recording this session. If you are concerned about that at all, please message me immediately so we can address that. And then um, this conference is fully student run and all like voluntary. So, and we're following the launch school code of conduct. So just be courteous and open-minded. And then um, we had 94 RSVPs today. So we're going to use the Q&A feature and the raise hand feature. So if you have any questions, try to put them in the Q&A first. And then if you need an opportunity to speak, just raise your hand uh, with the raise hand button and I'll take care of that. And we have a bunch of sessions coming up. So if you didn't register for those yet, we have Lena session tomorrow on cutting exam anxiety and deepening your knowledge by using Bloom's taxonomy uh, to assess your retention of knowledge. And we have Mandy session coming up on Tuesday for Use What You Know, A Journey Into Metacognition. And then Julio will be presenting on Wednesday for Principles of a 360 Study Wellness Plan. And we'll then have Jesse's session on Journey to Mastery and Programming, Fundamentals, Principles and Practices. And on Friday, um, Jose will be doing a lightning talk on dangerous intuitions, three common intuitions that make learning harder and what you should do instead. And then I'll actually be leading just a discussion group in a stand-up style. And on Saturday, we have Callie doing how to practice problem solving alone and with others. And on Sunday, we have Julia's presenting on building tacit knowledge. Uh, that's all. I'm excited to get things kicked off now with Roddy's presentation and we'll hand the mic over to him. Okay, can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. So I am excited for this. I am uh, honored. Uh, and I'm excited for the study week. Please, please, just kicking it off, don't miss Lena's talk tomorrow. I'm actually going to reference it uh, later on, but it's, it's, it's going to be good. And then the rest, uh, all throughout the week, you're, you're not going to win this piece. Uh, but, you know, we, we're going to tackle, today, we're going to tackle mastery a little faster E. Uh, and the main goal is for us to look at how can I get through the core curriculum at my best pace, right? So this is not looking at everyone else's best pace. Uh, this is not even going to be, yes, Rodney did it in this amount of time, so I'm going to do it in that amount of time. But really, I'm going to be sharing some principles that I've noticed that you can actually share, you can use to your own mastery journey, and then you can go at your best pace. So if that's four years, that's fine. If that's three weeks or... I don't even know how you could possibly do it in two months or however quick, that's, that's great as well. But these are some of the tips and tricks uh, that were useful to me. But before I jump into that, we'll jump to the next slide uh, and we'll just, I'll show you the format we're gonna follow. So in, we're gonna start with an introduction of who I am, why you should even care or listen. Um, and then we'll look at some, tips on mastery faster. Uh, in each of these tips, there are just gonna be a few tips and each of them I'm going to share a principle. And then from there, I'll show how I applied it. And then just moving on from there, uh, I'm going to focus on the high level. Uh, and then you can, if you have a specific implementation detail that you wanna talk about, you can ask me in the question and answer session. Uh, and then the most and most, most important part of this presentation is that we must end as awkwardly as possible. So we have to have that, like, you know, at the end of all capstone projects, there's this awkward, silent moment. We have to have that moment. So uh, without further ado, let's dive in. Um, so I'll go into the next page. I uh, introduce myself a little bit. So my name is Rodney Matambo. If you've ever uh, seen my Slack handle, you will see uh, these four parts, uh, it says husband, father, teacher, 
programmer. And so a little bit of background on myself is that I was born in Zimbabwe and you have to kind of imagine this very strong African accent. And then I grew up in Zimbabwe and then I moved from Zimbabwe to uh, England. And, and I remember moving there the first time and I started having to learn how to change my accent a little bit. And then I started sounding a little bit different because I had an English accent. Moving forward, I, I moved again with my family to Scotland. And then I started having a wee bit of a Scottish twang like this. Uh, moving onwards, I moved to, to, to America, right next to the middle of nowhere uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, and so from there, my family has moved all around the world. Um, and actually, I, do, I did a lot of nonprofit service projects from uh, that point onwards. So I moved to Cambodia and on that, uh, and, uh, uh, and all these other places. And so I got married um, to uh, my partner in crime um, and that's how I became a husband. I am a uh, father to two kids and there is uh, uh, two boys and there is a baby girl on the way. Um, and so, and then also I got my degree in teaching. So I have a teaching background and launch school has taught me how to become a programmer. Uh, and so in that, my launch school experience was very uh, interesting because I believe it was Sunday, May 17, that I, a friend of mine, Tally, actually introduced me to launch school. And from there, that's when I started launch school. Uh, 206 days later, um, I, that's when I finished, I clicked, you know, the very last button, whatever you have to click. And there's like, pop up and like basically fairies come out of nowhere and say you finished uh, the launch school core curriculum. Um, and so, yeah, so wait for that experience. It'll be wonderful. So that was, so 206 days, people asked me, so how did you do it so fast? Um, and I have to start off by saying, you know, um, there's a very stringent condition that I have to place before this um this talk and that is um you'll find out in a moment um so let's go to the next slide if you're ready uh stretch uh whatever you need to do let's begin there are five principles that we're gonna cover and really um if you want to succeed in launch school you want to make your approach personal okay so next slide we we will the reason I said you will find out in a moment is because this is the very core reason why I, I say this. Um, you are not me and I'm not you. Um, and no one else can replicate who you are. Uh, nobody else can replicate my experience, right? So for example, my, in my background, I've learned, I've learned up to uh, quite a few languages, right? So I know, I know three languages to fluency, but uh, and two I kind of know uh, to play around it with, but like you can't, not everybody can replicate that. So it's essentially when you're talking about um, your launch school journey, you have to make it personal because um, if you try to say, well, I'm just going to do what this person did, you don't have that person's background. So for example, I was a teacher and I taught math. So when I look at certain problems, like I just think of math principles and I just solve them in a math approach, as opposed to someone who doesn't have that background. Also, if I was a teacher, I can see the purpose behind specific curriculum choices of a launch school. And and that that's something of my background but that's also a benefit to you because one of the first keys to moving fa mastering faster is the fact that you must know yourself you must know what can i bring to the table for my background and like as i was mentioning in lena's talk she's going to talk about bloom's taxonomy and how you can uh learn how to do higher level thinking you don't want to miss that because it is a part of knowing yourself uh take take personality tests take take um you know howard gardner's uh test and all of these things to learn yourself and how do i learn right and then take advantage of your your background right so um i had a friend who was into marketing and he could like 
when he was uh, teaching, he would just be able to uh, teach concepts and like make friends very quickly. And it was a part of what helped him move forward. So you don't, if your background is as a PhD or whatever, take that to your advantage and use, make your study approach based on that, right? So, and then build a note-taking system that works for you. So there's this bad habit where, where like, just because someone mentioned it, that's why I'm going to try it, uh, or that's why I'm going to do it. Not, nothing wrong with trying it, but you, not everything will work for you. So build a note-taking system that works for you. So if we go to the next slide, I will show you how I built my note-taking system, right? So uh, in my note-taking system, I, I use Notion. Um, uh, everyone should use Notion. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so use, use a platform that works for you. But um, it, it basically has everything you need. And my notes tend to take a four-part approach, right? So I take, um, like, I start with, labeling four parts test textbook notes highlights and practice question and i need to put a disclaimer that i don't do this for every single lesson but this is in a most complete setting i usually have these four and textbook is gonna be if i need to like there's something i need to keep word for word from uh, the launch school material then i put that in the textbook section right and as I'm going through a lesson, so this is how I would go through a lesson essentially. As I go through a lesson, um, if I need something that I, sometimes it's like a whole lesson, I guess, and you just, you just paste it in and say, this is, I need to keep reference to this. And then as you're building up your notes, right? So my note taking system is actually in a question format. So as I read, I'm making notes, I, I'm making questions for each, sometimes it's each paragraph, uh, sometimes you're like, this lesson is just like making one main point. So I make one question and I just grab exactly the portion, the portions that are important to me. But I tried to grab one where it's like, it's not super long, it's not super short, but perhaps you're going through a lesson. And if you don't know what jQuery is, don't worry about it. But um, this is one of my, well, this was one of my more recent ones. And essentially, I would go through a paragraph and it says, like, I'm trying to see as I'm reading this paragraph, what question does this answer? What question does this answer? And so, for example, what is an issue jQuery is used for uh, in the area of events, right? So, um, you know, what is an example of a situation in jQuery where event delegation would be useful? And then I grab, I grab what I need. And so, this is useful on two approaches because I'm using active, and again, the principle is just active uh, note-taking. However you wanna do it, that's fine. But at the same, at the same time, for me, this is what works. Um, um, and then after this, after I've done this, I make a highlight section. And the highlight section, the important part of it is that I'm going to take this, this, this highlight section and I'm not going to look at the, note, at the notes or the textbook or anything. And I'm going to write down in bullet style based on each question, anything I can remember that was most important about this lesson. So what you're essentially doing is you're tricking your brain to, to reinforce sooner rather than later. So for example, right now, what you had to do is as you were reading, you had to summarize the concept by asking one question. And then after you do this, you're in the highlight section, you're looking back at that question and you have to go from summary to most important point. And so you've now essentially just reviewed twice in the process of your first learning, okay? And you've actually done this quickly. And this is one of the key areas that you can take advantage of. And then some lessons have practice questions in the, in the lesson itself. And so usually when there's a lesson is over, if there's a lesson um, that has practice pro pro problems, I put them in the section and write any notes about what I need to focus on. But you're like, look, Rodney, like this is actually giving me more work. Uh, this is, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have, uh, I can't take necessarily this approach and this, and, and that's fine, which is why we go to our next point, which is, you know, if you want to succeed in launch school, uh, you really need to embrace the spot pattern, okay? So the spot pattern, I mean, we have a whole spot group, so it's, it's pretty big deal. But essentially, 
when we're talking about patterns, you know, everybody has their own patterns, but um, my point is these are kind of phases of learning and they're not, I want to make it a, a very important point to say they're not linear. It's not like, okay, now that I'm done studying, I'm going to go practice and then I'm going to go over and I'm going to go teach, but rather they are circular in that like sometimes you need to um, move to another step before, uh, before you get to another. But in general, you will kind of follow this pattern. So let's, let's dig, in deep, dig in deeper and see what exactly the spot pattern is. So if we go to the next slide, you'll notice that the spot pattern, you know, the spot pattern essentially has four parts, study, practice, overlearn, teach. So what essentially you're doing, right? So as you're building up your notes and doing all these things, you, you get to some points where you're, you're having a, either a headache because you're not getting it or, uh, or whatever, um, and, uh, or even you're, you're just tired and you don't want to take so many notes, right? Or whatever you may, may need to do. So maybe you need to shift into a different phase. But these, these four phases are like this, right? So in the study phase, the point of the study phase is to get exposure to the topic. You want to get to the point where you can explain everything about a concept, even if, now this is the important part, even if you can't necessarily replicate everything yet. But I know what uh, variable scope is. I know how to explain variable scope. I know uh, if, whether it's in Ruby or, or if, if with local variable scope or looking at JavaScript and looking at global variables, I know what this concept is. And even though I couldn't just build a whole program uh, that doesn't have scoping issues yet, um, I do know the concept very clearly, right? And I could, I could say I have a very clear grasp of the content, right? So, so, so some people have different approaches where uh, and again, this is where we come back to personal. Some people will start by saying, okay, I'm going to do this for each single concept. And I go one layer deep um, in each concept. But a lot of other people may take an approach where I'm going to go through all the content first. And this is, this is actually the approach I take, where I go through all the content first to build a mental model so that there's nothing new that's going to come to me. And, and now I can, now I can fix, fix what I don't understand in detail. And this is how I fix in detail, right? So I go through con concepts and I'm making sure I understand concepts, right? So I can't necessarily build an entire program yet, maybe the tic-tac-toe game yet, uh, but I can say virtually I know what the concepts are. Now I need to move to the practice phase. And again, they're circular, so you can do them in a different order. Uh, but this is usually a good approach. So the point of the practice phase, and, and Launch School helps you out so much with these first two phases because like they give you three trillion uh, problems to where you could do problems until you're fed up. So the point of the practice phase is to get to the point where you can um, replicate the core concepts in code, right? And so you're replicating everything that you need to know in code. And then after this, you get to, um, you get to a point where I can, okay, I, I see how this works in regular circumstances and, and the problems they presented to me. I have a very clear grasp and now I could even code this concept, right? Um, and next you go to overlearning, right? So this is where you're pursuing edge cases, right? So you get curious and you ask why and try to look at edge cases. And this can take as long as you want, right? So some people, you know, you'll end up, you'll end up going down a deep rabbit hole trying to understand what exactly uh, self is in, in Ruby or, uh, or trying to understand closures you go deep deep but a good place to start are the lesson forums right so if you notice in the picture i tagged here people like any t this is just like a, a life hack anytime they have a pinned post this is your overlearning chance because whenever there's a question there try to look at the question and try to look at the question and then before looking at what the answer uh the ta's posted is try to answer it for yourself see where your gaps are and this is your overlearning chance because now you can start filling in your gaps um, on your own. 
But then the gold, the gold really here is in this last phase of teaching, right? And the focus here is on mastery. And you're trying to get to a point where you can explain concepts outside of the original context. So notice what happens, right? So in the study phase, you are learning material in sequence. It's a very clear context. And it's like they, like um, launch school is taking you through the baby steps, right? Practice, you have all these practice problems uh, on Launch School website, and they're, they're, they're really, con they're trying to give you contrived examples so that you can learn one concept at a time. And then in overlearning, right, you're, you're, you're here trying to find edge cases of someone who had a specific question, and you, again, still can control context. When you get to the teaching phase, one thing shifts, and that is you can no longer can, uh, um, decide context. So for example, if you're teaching someone, they can, they can have a question that seems unrelated, but it actually brings two concepts together in a way that you never had to. When, when someone's asking a question, you may have to talk about local variable scope, and then you go into blocks, and you go into procs, and you go into uh, different aspects, and you're, you're trying to maneuver all of these different contexts, and now you're solidifying concepts, and this is where you can really get mastery but you say well i'm not a person who interacts with others well you know perhaps you can go to sessions um and just have other people teach you or try to explain in a one-on-one -on -one session other times you can um try writing articles just writing articles the point is to get that feeling where you feel uncomfortable about having to place your knowledge out there and and one, one, one life hack in that area is, um, you know, answering questions on Slack. And I don't, I don't recommend this for everybody. In fact, there's a very specific approach I would recommend. And that is if you're, um, like everybody knows that feeling where you're about to post something on Slack and you pause or, and then you go, go to the docs to make sure you're correct, right? Um, and that feeling is actually a chance to learn where even if you never post it, um, but having the intent that I'm going to answer someone's question, I wanna make sure it's correct. And I have a source in the docs, which explains this exact thing. That in itself is in a, a process where you are able to try to push your emotional boundaries to say, you know what? I'm placing myself in a situation where I can master a, a concept. And so you'll see that pattern that, really you're trying to place yourself in situations where you have to learn some you have to learn something in a new context and so any of these approaches you can you don't do all of these for one class you do this for one class you probably burn out but you you take these four principles and then you 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 spread them out over uh and you do one thing for one class or some things for one class and other things for for other classes but, you know, we talked about interacting with people and that, that actually brings us to our third point, which is if you want to succeed in launch school, right? You really need to learn how to form meaningful relationships with people. So when we're talking about relationships with people, you can look at it as relationships in launch school and relationships outside of, uh, outside of launch school. And so let's, let's break this down a little bit by looking at types of relationships, right? So, when we're as you're studying you're gonna learn like man like you want me to do all that like that's that's a lot of work well there's a key principle that you know you can learn more together than you can alone and so if we go to the next slide you'll notice you know in launch school yes we're building friendships and all, all these things but specifically just in the context of studying um you want to now learn how to build different types of relationships most of us focus on the second type of relationship which is or i mean the the middle relationship which is forming uh relationships with people who know what we know and that's because we don't necessarily want other people you know to feel like we're we're dragging them down because they're like they're in js 3002 and we're in like rv100 and we're like well, I don't want, you know, I don't want to drag them down, but you really want to learn to form all three of these relationships that in launch school, people who know more than you, right? And then people who know what you know, and then people who know less than you. 
Um, because let, if you think about it this way, right? When you're interacting with someone who knows more than you, right? They, you're not, the focus is not even actually just learning the content. One of the core things I got from launch school is they actually, like, it was a paradigm shift in that I learned how to approach problems differently. And here is a golden chance to interact with someone who has been struggling with similar problems longer than you have, and they've actually built systems. And so one encounter I'll tell you about is I have a friend named Jordan Whistler, and, you know, in, one, in one, 109, we were studying for the assessment. And this guy, this guy is like a magician with all his, like, ruby, ruby methods. He, like, pulls them out of a hat. I'm like, what, where, where, is, where is this coming from? This dude has every single ruby method that's ever been in existence. And so, like, when I, when I would be interacting with him um, and we would be studying together, he knew more ruby methods than I, than I did. And so, as we'd go by by like day by day i'm picking up every single method he has and i'm learning from him because he he already has more experience having to to struggle with this than i did than i did at that time and so as a result you learn from people who know more than you but not only people in the same class but people in classes ahead they have had to learn more systematic approaches and they're in they're their um, experience can actually help you. But, but you go one step further and you learn from people who know what you know, right? So this is when you have somebody by your side, you now have, both of you have not seen this problem. Both of you cannot solve this problem. And so you can use a synergistic approach to actually try to solve something together. And so I have a friend named um, Ezra uh, and you know I would interact with uh, Ezra often and like as soon as we hit a problem, I'd be like, hmm, I wonder how we could do this. And Ezra's first instinct was, yeah, let's go to the dock. And, and, and I'm like, I'm over here, the most anti, uh, naturally anti docs person. I just want a simple Stack Overflow answer. But Ezra is the person who's like, I'm going to the docs because when he's going for mastery, he, was, he, was, um, he would always like, want to find the source and that's how he got used to the docs. And that's how I learned how to approach the docs more and more and more, right? And so you learn from people who know more than you. You learn from people who know what you know, but you also learn from people who know less than you. So for example, there, like people think, you know, teaching someone has to be, I am, I am, uh, like I'm, uh, I know everything and therefore I'm pouring out all of my knowledge on you. No, 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 there's a golden, golden ratio that's just beautiful. There's this person who's ahead and you know the mental model of a specific subject, but you've forgotten an implementation detail. And there's this person who's going through material right now. They know all the vocabulary, but they have a shaky mental model. So why not have the best of both worlds where you are able to help fix their mental model and you, they are also able to help whatever implementation details you forgot. And you can learn from people who know less than you. And so these are the three relations I'd really recommend in launch school. But I'd also recommend relationships, uh, um, one specific relationship outside of launch school that you have to guard if you want to master faster. And that is um, your, wh whether it's your partner or your accountability person. Um, you know, in launch school, we have a very contrived society or we have a very um, made up um, context where we can, we only know people through their code. We know people through Slack. We know uh, people through our interactions with them, but we don't know who snores. You know, we don't know who, you know, who's uh, whatever. We don't know your true self. Nobody knows your true self here because we don't actually interact with you on a daily basis. And so, you know, the point, the point I'm trying to make here is we don't know whether or not your life is in balance. You can be the, the best coder ever, but it's like your life is now going out of whack because of trying to, uh, trying to do launch school. And so for me, this was very important because my, my wife is like the best wife in the universe and she um she would always keep me focused she would always help me um and she was my accountability person because 
you know, she's a person who's not afraid to tell me as that exactly how it is. And she's not afraid to tell me like, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly. And she has to uh, experience my decisions on a daily basis. So she's invested in the decisions I make. And so having those people in your life will actually like cultivating that relationship and making sure that you have people who can keep you say like, are you okay? Like you seem to be getting drained. You seem tired. Do you want, do you want some help with something and people who will support you, but healthily, this is actually very key uh, to succeed in launch school. But as we talk about balance, you know, it becomes important to know the next principle, which is if you want to succeed in launch school, you have to learn how to regularly in, uh, maintain your inner peace. You know, the, the idea, um, you know, as we go through uh, the launch school material and all of these things, there is a very, very strong danger for every single launch school student, uh, especially those who are doing full, full time. And you must beware of one dimensional living. And, and it's really just the, the, the approach of remembering that there's life outside um, of, of launch school. So let me explain what, what, what one dimensional living is. So one dimensional living is the idea that all of my energies or efforts are focused in one direction, right? And so when one aspect of your life dictates uh, the rest of your life, your emotional stability will depend on that. So for example, a very clear example would be like, if, if, if it happens with you with launch school and you're living, uh, doing one dimensional living, it's essentially like, if I do badly on a test, like I'm on the edge of depression. Like if I, if I go, you know, if I have a bad interaction on Slack or whatever context, like I'm, I'm like, I'm like breaking apart, right? So it's like my, my emotional stability has literally come from one dimension. And it's not just launch school, but it could be anything really. But the point is, since we're launch school students here, I, I, I heavily say, beware of one dimensional living. And, and, remember that there's life outside of launch school, right? So, so my specific approach, uh, if we go to the next page on finding my piece was essentially you want, like, you want to find your center because where you get your value from will dictate how your emotions fluctuate, okay? Where you get your value from will dictate how your emotions will fluctuate. And so for you, you must, you must, uh, you must address it. And again, I, I'm not trying to, uh, go off on a complete tangent on that, but uh, you can slack, slack me later and we'll talk more about that later if you have more questions on that. But a practical implementation is that every week I take off, I take one uh, 24 hour period. Uh, I just, I don't touch Slack. I don't touch, um, I don't touch anything launch school. I don't even log into launch school. And for 24 hours, I'm like off the grid, right? Uh, it's myself, I have spiritual renewal, um, I have family renewal, and I just detach from everything. And I, I literally, and people will be like, but you're, you're, you're taking a day off? And, and I'm telling you, like, taking that day off will actually be, do so much good for you um, because now you can do diffuse learning and all these things as well. But also, in a, in a, uh, by taking a day off, you also are now able to um, make sure that you can emotionally detach yourself from lunch school, and that way you do not fall into the trap of one-dimensional living. But, you know, with all of that said, you know, at least for me, the very core, um, at least why I can push through is this last principle, and that is, um, if you want to know, if you want to succeed in launch school, you must know your purpose. Um, and, you know, it's like hashtag life goals. But essentially, if you go to the next page, um, let's see. If we go to the next page, um, you know, if you want to succeed in launch school, you need to know your purpose. You know, you have have something that pushes you, 
right? So for me, you know, essentially it's like know your why, have a definite aim and, and essentially have a purpose that doesn't end in itself. And for this last one, I'm actually gonna break down each, each one. So if we go to the next page, Simon Sinek, um, who wrote a book called Start With Why, and his basic premise was that people are not motivated by what. So no what will really motivate people, they're motivated by why. And so for you, if you want to be motivated to keep pushing, keep moving forward, right? You must start with why. Uh, start with a definite reason why. Like, like I was asked the question, why am, I, why am I doing launch school? Why am I moving forward? Why, why study now, right? So why, why push forward? And, 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 you know, for me, you know, it's, it's finding that definite aim. And, and you know, for myself, I have, I have motivations left, right, and center. Like my life goal, one of my life goals is I want to build a school that will bring forth the best students this world has ever seen. And I intrinsically believe I have purpose. So if, if that's my goal, every step I'm taking is moving towards that. But you're like, well, Rodney, I'm not, I'm not really trying to build a school. I'm just trying to get a job. And that's fine, okay? Like even closer to home, I, I'm motivated by service. I'm motivated by making sure my family um, is, is in a good, good, good place. Um, I'm motivated by wanting to individually do something meaningful with my life. And also um, I, want to, I, I want to have the freedom to do what I want to do in other areas, right? So, so it's like these motivations keep them steadily in view, right? So, um, and, and a, kind of a plug there is you must, if you really want to find uh, a purpose, then find a purpose that doesn't end in itself. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a clear example what this, this looks like. So for example, Chris Lee, um, when, and, and everybody involved in building Launch School, when they built Launch School, right, they built a platform uh, and then they had a purpose behind it. And that's probably like changing people's lives or, you know, world domination, something, something along those lines. But the, the end point there is that the fact that they have a clear goal, but, you know, it doesn't end in itself. And end in itself means that there's an aspect of it that you cannot control, right? So, for example, Chris, to this day, will never be able to control who clicks the subscribe button and clicks, I want to start a subscription. Uh, he, he can never control who, in, who, who everyone who decides to check out Launch School for the first time. But this is also a very big benefit because now he also cannot control what, the, what someone's life will look like after Launch School. But this is the beauty of it. He can actually now see where people end up going and he has no control over their life. But the beauty of it is just seeing where does someone's life end up based on the product that I created, right? Where does someone's, and, and, and this is what we talk about, what, what I mean when I talk about purpose is that it doesn't end in itself. Now he gets to see the joy of looking at other people change their lives and go forward and do amazing things. He gets to see the Launch School community thrive. And, and this is why he's always saying like, yeah, like I, we have the best community in the world because this is an aspect he couldn't control. And it's surprising in, in seeing how it plays itself out. So if you want to succeed in launch school, um, make sure you find a purpose. And I'll reiterate the quote, hey, we go to the next slide. I'll reiterate um, the quote, um, oh, I guess it didn't show up, but I'll reiterate, if we go back one, one page, you'll see the same quote. Um, for some reason. Hold on, I'll get the updated slide up. Um, just need one second. Uh, it might show well, it, my number a second. Here, I got it here. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. All right. I, can you see this one now? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Great. Um, find a find a purpose, and um, we could say I like I like this quote because when I was 
as a teacher, this was one quote that, like I found an old book um, written in the 1800s about education and there, there was this quote, it says, success in any line demands a definite aim. Uh, the one who would achieve true success in life must, must keep his or her aim steadily in view. And I just hope that if, like, if you want to succeed in launch school, um, there needs to be something pushing you forward. And more than implementation details, you need a push that will keep writing notes, keep um, interacting with people, why, keep um, pushing yourself forward, keep moving further, um, and you must keep that steadily in view. Uh, thank you. And so we go to the next slide. Uh, it's time for some Q and A. All right, uh, we're gonna just take a minute to go over the Q and A queue and then we will, I think, Lena, do you wanna start asking the questions? And then Rodney can respond. If we need an audience answer, then we can use the hand raising feature. Yeah, absolutely. So everyone at the bottom of the Zoom screen, you should see a Q&A, like two little bubbles, and then it says Q&A. You can submit your answers there. Um, let's take maybe a minute to have your answers come in, then Rodney can start answering them. Okay, we have one. Um, Rodney, I'll read it to you. So it's from Rachel McBride. She says, thanks for this great presentation, Rodney. It has been really helpful. My question for you, I'm still very new. So she's currently in lesson four of RB 101, and she's having a hard time to distinguish between when she should embrace her curiosity and pursue overlearning versus when she's going down a rabbit hole, which may not be the best use of her time. As you continued in the core curriculum, did you, Rodney, feel like you got a better sense of what was useful in terms of overlearning versus what was a little less useful, like going down a rabbit hole? And do you have any tips on how to make this distinction? Excellent, excellent question. Um, and that's, that's why I would actually recommend starting with the forum posts. So, so this, like the, the Launch School community um, is, really, is really helpful. But um, one specific thing is like, whenever you see lesson forums, um, and you see pinned posts. Those posts are the ones which are certified non-rabbit holes type of questions. They're very relevant. And so when you go there, those are, those are very important. Those are very um, key, right? And so if you like a very good place to start is like, think about it. There are very, very good programmers and launch school TAs who are giving specific answers to questions that students who were in a similar position to you asked. So that, that's a really key place. And then the, um, the other thing is uh, focusing on things uh, like further exploration, that's, that's fair game. Um, but it's like, to me, the very, like when I look at the SPOT approach, right? Over learning for me is very class dependent. There are some classes where Overlearning will actually be detrimental in some regards. What I mean by that is, for example, um, in LS 170, uh, the, there, there are very focused areas that they want you to deal with. And I remember going down a rabbit hole on security, um, looking further into um, what security looked like and looking at cybersecurity and, and going further. And I. And I, I like came back from that realizing like, yeah, launch school just told me focus on this, right? So there has to be a point where you trust the process because the point, one of the points, at least for me, right? At least for me, one of the points of the core curriculum was to build a basis so that later on, if you need to go into rabbit holes for a specific job, you have the basis to learn any rabbit hole. So it's like, once you finish the core, rabbit holes are there for your taking. Like, I'm going down rabbit holes right now and it's, it's, it's pleasant, but if I tried to do this in core, I would have like, I would have like just derailed myself really hard. So the short answer is focus on what you see uh, as pinned posts or 
another approach um, to go into rabbit holes, and this is code specific, um, focused on um, forum posts and also um, code reviews. And so if you don't have a lot of time to uh, submit a code review, then at least look at what was written on someone uh, on on someone else's code review who has a similar code base to you and that at least you're still you're still safely going into exploring uh, areas that are safe. Um, I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Rodney. We could go to the next question. So yep. Janae asks, what was your daily weekly study routine like during core? Wonderful. Uh, I knew someone was going to ask this question. I, I stayed away from this question for, for one reason, and that is um, I'm fearful that someone will try to replicate um, and they're not in the same context. So for example, uh, but uh, I'm going to answer it now because I, I presented the five principles that uh, I'd like everyone to focus on. But uh, specifically for me, my daily schedule was um, I would take Sunday to Wednesday, uh, largely. Um, that, that, that would be when I, I would do uh, a lot of my launch school stuff and then also Friday. So I would take uh, Thursday to uh, do, whether it was, uh, if I had to do some small projects to just, you know, keep my, um, my family afloat. <laughs> um, and I would teach a few classes here and there. Um, and then my, and then Friday um, would be another day. So on a daily schedule, um, I would generally wake up around oh, around six, um, spend some uh, alone time. Um, again, daily, just making my uh, making sure uh, that you know spirituality is right and all these things. Just personal time, and then also spend some time with my family. And then I usually would start launch school stuff by nine eight eight to nine sometimes i would change my schedule around but in a generic day start around nine um and then i would go let's say i'm reading content um as soon as i'm like one of the key things i would do is i would switch uh in order to be able to study a little longer i would actually switch from one thing to another so for example if i was reading uh the material then switch to going to do a study session with someone. Um, and if I was finished a study session, then perhaps go watch a video or uh, do something else, right? And then, um, uh, and then I usually stopped around four uh, Eastern. So this is all in Eastern time. My, my time zones are all whack now. But, um, and so I would take breaks in there um, take break to have lunch, uh, go chase my kids around the house. Um, and then, uh, what else, what else, what else? Um, ah, yes. So, and then have, I'd have dinner with my family every day. Um, and then I would, uh, shower my boys. And then some days, uh, usually whether I have date night with my wife or time with my kids or, uh, and then some days I would have sessions with, with people. Um, and so the, the point, the point I would actually try to say there is that for me, um, the reason I could actually end up going longer or do longer is because I kept switching, I kept switching, um, activities. And so that allowed me to not feel the headache. And so I would recommend if you're like, well, I have time and I want to put in time. The key there is switch activities. As soon as you're starting to, to hit a headache uh, and a wall or whatever, switch activities. So if you're, not, if you're not getting it in one approach, this is what comes back to personal. Figure out, can, do I learn best through videos? Do I learn through reading articles? Do I, do I need to go on Medium? Um, do I go on YouTube? And, it's like YouTube would be safe for me when it's just trying to build a mental model uh, of something. Like, for example, 
um, what is a variable. And I just have a two minute video explaining variable um, and I'm building a mental model, but then I come back to launch school um, material on the specific verbiage that I need. And so I hope that answers, um, that answers that question, I hope. Yeah, let me know if it doesn't. <laughs> Thanks, Rodney. So next question, Mia asks, did you complete any coding side projects outside of launch school assignments or projects? Yeah, so um, yes, yeah. so uh, this will, let me think of side projects. So myself and Jordan, I, there you just have like these people who love coding with you. Um, uh, Chris Larwood uh, helped start the spot with me and we were just like uh, if we ever did a side project it would be with um, with uh, him and then um, also with Jordan Whistler like we made a hangman game a while back we thought about creating a Ruby library or something like that we're like we're way out of our league we don't know what we're doing so we never did that uh, but really it's like if you're going to do a project it should be one day to two or unless like if you're doing 175 project or things like that where launch school specifically tells you do a project it can take longer but like if you're doing side projects they shouldn't be super long ones they should just be I want to like the focus for me was always not even about the project itself it was just that we're practicing concepts and we're just gonna happen to make a project on the side um, and so, yeah, I wouldn't recommend, unless it's at a specific launch school defined point, um, I wouldn't recommend projects that take much longer than one to three days. Um, and that's me. Someone else may have a different opinion on that. Um, yeah. Great, thank you. So we have two questions that are pretty similar. So mm -hmm. as you progress through the levels, how much time about did you spend to review previous courses. So that's both from Rona and Balau, who may have concerns about getting perhaps rusty when you've reached the front end portion of the Ruby track. Yeah, so this is a, I'm, so I'm gonna first answer the question behind the question, um, and then um, I'll answer that question. So one of the questions behind the question is, um, how do I keep fresh? Um, and it's like, there are two specific problems uh, like those who have been in launch school for a while that I interact with, there's this feeling of like, how, how did, like, how did I forget so much, right? Because there's this cliff of forgetfulness. And the reason is like, you've made some, some people haven't touched Ruby in a whole year, right? They, they, and so it's like, you can't expect the, like your fluency to be the exact same um, place um, after not having touched Ruby for like a whole year. Um, and so, which is, and that's, that's the fine, that's the long-term um, issue that I've heard from friends. Uh, and then the short term, like if you're moving quickly, you're, if you don't remember something, your automatically instinct, um, your automatic instinct is, well, like, did I move too fast? But realizing that, like, like we have this like unrealistic expectation on ourselves that I must remember all content at all times for all classes where it's like you don't even have that kind of expectation in any other area of your life like you don't even remember all your family members names right so it's like there's some second uncle you're like uncle such and such like you don't there there you have to give yourself leeway for forgetting but this is the so how then did i um try to mitigate that and so this is the beauty of this approach, and that is when you're the mastery portion, then this is why I said the teaching portion continues after you finish a class. So the, really the spot really centers on that specific principle. Like think about it. You now have the ability to like, as you're forgetting things, there's someone who's in the class getting ready to take an assessment, which means they're supposed to master something to almost 100% um, understanding of each of these topics. And you, even though you don't, you don't remember every implementation detail, you do remember the mental model and everything about the big picture. 
And so now you can, you can now work together. And this is like, that's why for me, I would actually uh, give study sessions so often, largely because um, other people, I'm helping someone else learn their content. And I'm also building confidence in my retention. And it, it's like, if you don't remember something, you know where the docs are. And it's like the difference that what one of the key things Launch School has given us is the fact that even though we don't remember every single detail about every single Ruby method uh, we've ever used, but we now have a new approach to problem solving. And that is why in, in two to three days, you would have the same fluency that you used to have in whatever, whenever, whatever area. So um, to continue the process, teach other people, um, whether it's writing articles, if you're like, I don't, I don't do the whole socializing thing, or um, it's doing one-on-one -on -one sessions or leading spot sessions uh, or leading other sessions or interacting with, uh, with people through Slack uh, or even building uh, a one to three day project to bring things together. Um, so that's, those are my, those are my tips on that. Thank you again. So we have two more questions. Uh, first, from mm -hmm. Rona, what is your ratio of studying by yourself versus studying with others? Um, this actually is a very Rona question because I remember um, like Rona um, is, has, has made an art of how to study with others. And uh, this is why I said the personal, personal, um, personal portion is very important because um, like, I don't know your life circumstances. And so for me, the ratio, the ratio of studying with myself, studying myself versus studying with others um, was very much, I was okay with um, like, if I had the opportunity to study on my own or study with another person, and this is me, I would actually give up a chance to study on my own um, in order to study with another person. Um, but that also comes to, it comes back to purpose. Like for me, um, I value serving another individual. So that was, that was the reason behind that. But like, if you're just asking, well, if in a, outside of that purpose, what would you decide? And I would actually say, um, I would still decide to study, um, study with another person because at the end of the day, I, I'm still allowing my mind to get a mental break from um, myself. So my ratio of study on my own versus study with others usually went, uh, or it, uh, the easiest answer would be it depends. Because some days um, I had many study sessions with others. Other days I didn't. And so, um, but if you are a person who learns socially, go ahead um, and make most make the most of that time I uh, just maximize your learning time if you're gonna learn with others know how to ask the right questions um, and yeah know know how to ask the right questions and know how to uh, be have a mutually beneficial relationship in that like even like even if someone is ahead of you you are still benefiting them because you're helping them review um, their content. So you don't have to feel like it's a one down, one up relationship. Both of you are benefiting. And so, yeah, that's it. Great, thank you so much. And we have one last question, Ravi. So this is from mm -hmm. Matthew Kiefer. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about some mistakes you made along the way? Oh man, calling people out, huh? Okay, um, so some mistakes I made along the way. Well, it was pretty perfect, actually. No, uh, I was not far from perfect. Um, uh, mistakes along the way. I remember when I first got into uh, launch school, I would learn a concept and like immediately try to uh, jump on Slack and try to answer someone's question when I didn't know a concept yet. And so I learned how to how to um, make sure I know my content before answering. Um, 
that was that was one mistake. Uh, another mistake was, um, I I thought uh, that um, mastery meant that I do not um, I I have memorized everything. I understand everything, and I um, I uh, like I I basically there's I I remember everything and I remember everything to like uh, a, a crazy um, level but to be honest um, like I don't know I mean I guess this is going back to George Leonard but like when when people really master something they're able to simplify it um, and so and so for me um, it was moving away from trying to memorize things and focus on simplifying things. For example, um, one thing I started doing very often was analogies. Um, whenever I would be in 120, I would start building an analogy. So it's like, what is a class? Well, think of it like, um, you know, think of it uh, in whatever context you need to, to remember it. Um, and also just kind of getting used to um, uh, or, or focusing on like the like distilling like I'm learning this so I can distill it to its simplest forms so that I could now fix my mental model even if I should later forget what the group by method does I still have the framework of how Ruby works and I know where I can find a specific implementation detail and so the to to answer uh, that is essentially moving away from memorizing and um, and knowing everything to moving towards mastering the very core concepts, which looks like uh, being able to take very difficult concepts and simplify them. Um, I yeah, I think that's that's it. Um, are there any more, no more questions? That was the last one. Thank you so much for answering them, Rodney. Okay, wonderful. Uh, if that's the case, we can move to the last slide um, as promised. Um, and we must, must end. Um, we must end with a piece of awkwardness. Thank you guys for um thank you guys for attending i appreciate uh and i hope this was helpful for everyone and i really hope that you um everybody's trying to change their life for some reason or another so go forth uh, and i hope the best to everybody and uh let's end it on an awkward note <laughs>